as this article out of geek.com shows, scientists wake up ancient woolly mammoth cells in high tech experiment. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not. I mean, we actually are seeing zombie, zombie woolly mammoths. Create, uh, slowly, incrementally create. I'm sure they actually probably are created at this point in a weird science, government science lab somewhere. I'm not going to go full Alex Jones on you guys. But yeah, as many of you guys know, I've been uh, looking into ancient civilizations lately. And this plays into what I've been uh, talking about uh, significantly. Because uh, I'll go into that in a moment. But uh, going to the end of the Younger Dries period, uh, the end of ancient civilizations that high, had high technology. We're not talking about aliens here. But uh, nonetheless, there were amazing societies that existed that had incredible technology. Uh, there's no joke. There's no joke there. There's no um, wondering about. I mean, this is a fact. We have seen this to be true with the pyramids, with the Sphinx, uh, water erosion, and uh, the dating of these uh, places. Go back to the Tepe. There's no doubt that we are seeing. Uh, evidence of ancient civilizations where less ancient civilizations built on top of them like in Machu Picchu and Puma Punku etc we recently went into Puma Punku with Brian Forster here at WAM in an interview that you should all check out as well on our channel but anyway let's get into the story about the mammoths then I'll go into this further in a moment um, as the story goes into scientists in Japan have awakened 28,000 year old cells from a woolly mammoth that lived on our planet years ago and their observations could provide a better understanding of extinct animals lives the team which published their findings in uh, scientific reports recovered cell nuclei from the remains of yucca a preserved mammoth that was discovered in siberia's permafrost nine years ago uh, Fizz.org reported, while there won't be any woolly mammoths rising from the grave soon, the experiment could help scientists explore alternative resurrection methods in the future. And you could see this little uh, this little post by Stephen Hurst here on Twitter. Researchers observe biological activity after transplanting cell nuclei from yucca, the woolly mammoth, dead for 28,000 years, into mice, oocytes, oocytes, oocytes. I'm not a scientist, folks. Do not quote me on that pronunciation anyway. Uh, for the experiment, the scientists inserted muscle cell nuclei, nuclei from the woolly mammoth carcass into mouse cells and observed for signs of biological activity, Newsweek reported. Um, first, an analysis showed that nucleus-like uh, structures were present in the animal's muscle tissue, and then additional tests revealed that its remains were not contaminated for 28,000 years. The team collected 88 nucleus-like structures from the creature and then placed them into mouse oocytes, oocytes uh, the cell that can split a form uh, split to form an ovum in the ovaries. Anyway, with a live cell imaging technique, the team watched to see what would happen to the awakened cells, quote unquote. Uh, and it shows Yucca surrounded by exhibition staff. Um, and I quote, the mammoth nuclei showed the spindle assembly, histone incorporation, uh, and partial nuclear formation. However, the full activation of nuclei for cleavage was not confirmed, the team wrote in their study. And another a scientific study of cleavage. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, we are yet to uh, see even cell divisions. Uh, Kai Miyamoto, a member of the team at Kindai University in Western D Japan, told AFP. I have to say we are very far from recreating a mammoth. Even though the team couldn't generate cell division needed for a woolly mammoth uh, rebirth, the team aims to try new approaches to bring the creatures back to life down the line. However, they'll need better preserved nuclei and additional experiments to reach this key biological milestone. And I quote, the results presented here clearly show us again the de facto impossibility to clone the mammoth by current NT nuclear transfer technology. Our approach uh, paves the way for evaluating the biological activities of nuclei in extinct animal species, the scientists uh, concluded in the study. Now, I have to thank Graham Hancock for making me aware of uh, that article and this story. Now, again, they say it's not exactly a success story, but they are really getting close to being able to do this on an official scale. Now, we have to remember going back to um, 
the 1940s and the stealth fighters that were uh, built by the military at that time and us only finding out about it in the 90s there's a lot to be said about classified documentation and a lot of theorizing about potential uh you know cell um or the ability to bring the dead back to life uh you know making mice into robots that come back to life with certain electroshocks in their brain like crazy stuff that it's straight out of science fiction and it's actually happening um, to a certain extent. And I wanted to go into this whole thing with mammoths. And a lot of you are wondering, why are you talking about mammoths? Well, back at the uh, around the time of the Younger Dryas period uh, in North America, the, uh, there's uh, giant sloths. There were mammoths. There's North American camels and lions, etc. That all just went extinct randomly at the same time around the si same time as the Clovis people. And I've gone into the meteor that hit uh, Greenland. Um, at the Hiawatha Crater, and as well as um, a potential plasma bursts around the world, which we have evidence of in many locations around the world. And the case of the mammoth is interesting because we have to remember that mammoths, uh, many of them were frozen like solid, just within flash frozen. They still had undigested food in their stomach when they died. How does that make any sense to anyone? I, I find it very interesting that we have this evidence and people just look the other way because they want to go by the uh, academic research that's mainstream that's been going around for so long. And I, I just find it interesting. These kinds of stories amaze me because they really go to show that we do not know everything about our history. We've been lied to a lot about our history as well. And when, again, you have all these uh, animals that were killed at the snap of a finger, you have to wonder why. And then it all incorporates into things like Atlantis, uh, strangely, and, uh, you know, all these stories of these great floods around the world and the ancient cataclysm, which basically every culture talked about at the same time. This is a real issue that we need to be studying more because if we figure out the background of human history, we can uh, likely figure out a little bit uh, about what might happen in the, in, in the near future. I mean, if you look at it from the perspective of uh, as I think it was Mark Twain who said, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. And there's absolutely no doubt that history does indeed rhyme. I am looking at this article right now, trying to bring up something that I wanted to uh, go into earlier that I don't want to forget about because, oh yeah, th that's right, Siberia. So something that um, Graham Hancock went into in his book, Fingerprints of the Gods, really stood out to me. And he goes into it in The Magicians of the Gods too. It's the fact that it's like crustal displacement, this theory that um, the mantle moved over or like these continents moved over the mantle, over the crust um, of the earth, like the, this shift that happened at the same time as, uh, uh, you know, a polar shift uh, as well. We had a magnetic polar shift in the planet where we moved over a certain amount of degrees and we saw places like Antarctica were on the coast close to um, South America there were tropical habitats that at one point were not iced over and there's evidence of that and there's if you look at the Puri Reese map and stuff they you could see evidence of stuff that people could only find with thermal technology today and somehow they did this in the 1100s and again in the 1500s and 1800s drawing out these maps perfectly which apparently came off of scrolls in libraries that they copied off of older maps to go back further it all seems to bring us to the last ice age interestingly just like uh the correlation with the pyramids and the stars in 10,000 uh, uh 800 bc etc and uh, about 26 or 2500 bc as well uh in other chambers very strange and the 26,000 year progression and the 13 every 13,000 years the rise and fall of uh, orion Anyway, that's a whole other thing. And the Egyptians somehow knowing that Sirius was A and B and was a big star with a smaller star going around it, a huge anomaly. But Siberia was at one point, it had somewhat of a tropical uh, climate. There were, there's evidence that there were parts of Siberia that are now completely frozen over, for the most part, that had somewhat of a tropical climate. So something huge happened to change that. Something massive happened to change the entire climate of the planet all in a very short amount of time around the end of the Younger Dryas period. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that co a comet caused the Younger Dryas period to begin in the first place. And then there's a lot of evidence that a comet or asteroid or just a plasma burst, there's multiple theories, ended it at the same time. And then we saw waters rise throughout the world, half the world on fire over decades and decades of time. Um, and of course we have the Mayans and the Incas 
and the Olmecs uh, allegedly according to um, other ancient civilizations uh, then the Egyptians, the Sumers, uh, so many civilizations around the world, uh, everything from China and India, Indonesia, I can go on and on. All talking about this ca catastrophe, this cataclysm that hit the earth and changed it forever. And then it plays perfectly into the Noah's Ark story and the epics of Gilgamesh and then the story of Atlantis that comes from Plato and Solon out of the Critaeus and Timaeus uh, uh, stories uh, of Atlantis and what they were told by um, old Egyptian elders at the time. Now I'm going to the reshot structure in the next few months uh, to study it on the ground. I'll be the second person ever to really go and study that anomaly myself because there's a lot of theories that Atlantis is the reshot structure and look at this point we have too much evidence 23.5 kilometers uh, around uh, just like uh, Plato uh, said in Critaeus and Timaeus, um, opens to the south to water, uh, mountains to the north with, with rivers, uh, fresh water in the center uh, of the rings, uh, or fre yeah, fresh water and then salt water in the outer rings. So much evidence, and then ancient maps show the uh, Atlas Mountains and what's Atlantis? The land of Atlas. King Atlas is mythical god. And then we have these the Atlas Mountains. And we have before the story of Atlantis, allegedly, uh, the Atlantic Ocean first being called the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Sea. I don't know. There's something strange going on. There's evidence that rivers went to um, the site of the reshot structure. And I want to find out myself. And I'm going to go there. And I'll be you know, one of the first people ever to actually examine the site. So I'm going with a whole bunch of people. I'll stay safe. Don't worry about it. Um, I want to document this thoroughly and break it down for all of you to all see. So anyway, I'm rambling on. I had no idea where I was going with this report today. Uh, I just felt like uh, rambling on a bit with this article about mammoths because I find it interesting. How could it, how could the the origins of human civilization not be interesting to anyone. I mean, seriously, who who isn't wondering who built the pyramids? Oh, no, it's just slaves. No, already debunked. Um, how do they, you know, lift these massive rocks and why did they when they could have just cut them into multiple pieces, a grand gallery of it, uh, the, the Valley Temple, the Sphinx, uh, you know, Mayan civilization, Olmec civilization, Inca and Aztec, all of them saying that they got it from earlier generations and it was like a... A helping hand, uh, Quetzalcoatl, uh, you know, you have Veracocha. Guys, there's so much evidence that these ancient societies that we know about today were handed down information. Unfortunately, the Spanish destroyed most of Mayan, Inca, and Aztec culture and uh, so many of their structures and so many, almost all of their documentation, same with the Olmecs. So very sad. We don't have a lot of information that we could have. It's the equivalent to burning down the Library of Alexandria in Egypt. But nonetheless, we can try and piece together as much of this as possible, and I find it incredibly interesting, and I know a lot of you guys do too as well. So I will continue looking into it. I'll go to these sites. I'll figure it out, and I'm going to be talking, hopefully, with Graham Hancock at the end of May as well in uh, in California. So anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, this is Josh Harrison signing out from World Alternative Media. Find the truth. Be the change. Like what you see here, Wham? Don't forget to check the links below. GoFundMe, Patreon. We can't do it without you. Any donation is very much appreciated, especially as we are so heavily demonetized and censored by YouTube. As these guys come in and flag all of our content as hate speech, the shadow banning is getting really bad, guys. Also, check our Bitcoin address right here on the screen or in the description below. We really appreciate it. And of course, check us out at the Red Pill Expo 2019. Of course, the great G. Edward Griffin and so many other incredible speakers will be there. Our link for that is below as well. And we cannot forget Mike Maloney's goldsilver.com, which you can also find in the description. One of the greatest market and monetary historians out there. We really encourage everyone to check that out. But until next time, this is Josh Sigurdsson signing out from World Alternative Media. Find the truth, be the change. I'm sure you have already changed people's minds in your young age because you're involved and I like that.